Now everybody wants that absolute control of their golf game where they can hit that fade, they can hit the draw, they can really control their shots, or even better, when you start to hook one or you start to slice one to know immediately what do I need to do to fix that and how can I get back on track. And that's exactly what we're going to do in this video. I'm going to talk about how to get better shot control, shot shape control to be able to hit the fade and the draw on command. All right, so one of the biggest myths out there when being able to control your shot shapes is that we're going to find one tip and that's going to be perfect for the draw. I'm going to be able to get the ball to draw every single time. I'll never have to worry about anything else and it's never going to leave me. Same thing with the fade. I'm going to find that one tip that just gets that perfect fade and I can hammer it out there. Well, unfortunately, because feels change so much from day to day, that's not ever really going to work. What really works, if you really want to get control of your game, we have to work on face and path or the direction that the face and path is moving through contact which we'll go over here in a second and work on that for an extended period of time really be able to control those factors and I'm going to show you today how we can do that get you started on this and then stick with that process for a period of time if you can do these for a month oh man at the end of the month you're gonna have so much more control than you'd ever believe just a few minutes every single day practice swings in your living room like we'll go over here later in the video will be absolutely perfect so first let's say before we get started in this, we have to really understand what is controlling the curvature of the ball. Now, wherever the ball starts is going to be the direction that the face is pointing just right at contact. So the only thing that determines where your ball goes is right when you make contact. And the, the, the point that determines or the part that determines where the ball starts is where that face is pointing. Let me go ahead and make a swing here. And I'm going to start out by having that face point a little bit to the right at contact. There we go, so that ball started kind of right center, almost straight, and then drew into the left rough. Now I know, I've got my flight scope here that takes these measurements, but I know for sure since that ball started just a fraction to the right, I will bet any amount of money that that flight scope's gonna tell me that my face is pointing to the right. Let's go ahead and see what this says. Club face, 2.2 degrees to the right. So just like I guessed, I knew it wasn't very much because the ball only started a little bit to the right, but it did start to the right, 2.2 degrees. Now the second piece here is which direction the club is swinging. So since my ball is gonna curve away from the path, or my ball is always gonna curve away from the direction the face is moving, or the club is moving, I know that that ball had to have a path to the right of my face. So my face was a little right. Because that ball drew, the ball always curves away from the direction the club is swinging. I know my club swung to the right because the ball curved to the left. If I had my ball curved to the right, that would mean that my path is moving to the left. So just by knowing those couple of just hard scientific facts, now we can look at everything and see exactly what's going on. It's kind of our, our radar, just having our eyes be the radar and see what's happening, just like you see those radars on TV. So now, if, we're, if we know this, how do we work on hitting those draws and fades? Well, the first thing, and what I've found is the most important, is we have to be able to control the direction that club is swinging. What I have found, let's start out with a draw example. What I've found is if you wanna hit a draw and you wanna be the kind of guy that can hit it on command, the most important thing is to be able to control the direction that the club is moving. If I want my ball to curve left, the ball always curves away from the direction the club is swinging, so if my, my club has to be swinging to the right. So you have to swing to the right to get the ball to curve to the left. So I know if I can just simply get that club head moving farther to the right through contact, what's going to happen is you'll naturally, this your own feel, will start to get that club face to roll on over a little bit more and create that draw. Let's try one out here, and I'm going to try to hit two in a row with my path going a little bit more to the right. The first tip on this is I'm just going to start out with a simple setup, align setup alignments. My feet are going to be a little more to the right, and my tilt of my body is going to be a little bit more to the right. That means tilting this way. Just a little bit will be plenty. As I tilt more to the right with my body, what that does is that creates a big gap here to where I can swing more this direction. If I tilted the other way, it would be much easier to swing this direction. So feet a little to the right, upper body tilted a little bit to the right. And now let's go ahead and try to make a swing. Again, that ball started down the right side. Didn't curve a lot back to the left. It may kick in the edge of the fairway, or just barely in the rough. So I know my path was to the right. My ball didn't curve, so my, fa my face and path were the same, and my path went down the right side. It's probably gonna tell me somewhere around the same as last time, maybe six or seven degrees if I had to guess. 9.5 degrees to the right, so that's plenty 
getting this club to move that direction. And I found that's the first piece. If I can't consistently get my club to swing that direction, then I'm gonna struggle controlling my shot shape. Now, what if I still struggle with this? What if I'm lined up to the right, I get a little bit of tilt, and then I'm still getting that ball that slices or the path is to the left? What I want you to feel there is a very simple drill. Do this five or six times to really get that exaggerated. Feet to the right, a little tilt to the right. Now from there, I'm gonna go ahead and turn my shoulders even more, almost 90 degrees this way, and I'm gonna have the butt end of that club facing out toward my golf ball. And from there, I'm gonna swing this direction. So I'm really getting here, I'm really letting that club, that would be like a 50 degree to the right path, really exaggerated. And I'm just gonna do 10 or 15 of those and that's the feeling I'm gonna have. Again, that, that ball is gonna draw because I'm just letting that face release and turn on over, which is much easier if you're swinging that direction. Let's go ahead and try one of those, having that same feeling. You're probably gonna see a kind of a wild number here because I'm really exaggerating a lot. There you go, big sweeping hook. And that one was probably well to the right. If the last one was nine and a half, that had to be you know, 15 or something along the lines of that. Let's see what my flight scope says. 13.4. So really getting that swinging out there. That's the first piece to hitting the draw. Making that path, making sure every single time I can swing to the right. If you're hitting an iron, this is the same with a driver or an iron. You don't have to have any specific club to make this work. If you're hitting an iron, look at those divots. If I'm lining up straight, is my divot pointing to the right, or is it to the right of wherever my target is? If it is, I'm right on track. As you get better and better, you can get those straighter and straighter, but in the beginning, we just wanna make sure everything is out to the right. Keep practicing this. If you're in your living room, you can really ingrain this, just making swings in your living room. If you have a little mat or a piece of carpet, visualize a straight line, and then get that path going to the right. Do 15, 20 swings every night, and you're gonna be building that muscle memory just like you want to. Now from there, let's talk about a couple tips to get that face to release. Let's imagine that we do have that path to the right, but now we're struggling getting that draw because the face is still too open. So the, ball, the, the face needs to be closed to where the direction I'm swinging to get that ball to turn on over. So it needs to be releasing this way. Now a big key to this is what's happening with the right elbow pit. If you tend to slice, if you watch my right elbow and my right shoulder, this is gonna be more of your move. Look at my elbow has turned more in. The back of my elbow would be, now be shooting this way. Whereas if I turn it more this way, look how that turns my hand more to the right on the club. My elbow pit comes up and my right elbow comes more toward my right hip. What that does is that puts my body and my arms and hands in a position to where now it's much more easy to get this club to turn on over. So the face can rotate closed much more easily from that position. If I'm in this position, right shoulder high, elbow in, hand turn more to the left. Now that club wants to do that. It wants to come back to neutral. So if you're struggling getting that ball to turn, get that elbow in. Your hand is gonna do this. This is actually a, a cool pro tip here. This is, it took me a long time to learn this, so make sure that you realize exactly what I'm saying here. My elbow can stay in and my hand does this to square up the face. Look at my club face. I can release my club face keeping that elbow in. If I let my, if I try to square up my club face by doing this, I'm gonna end up getting that over the top move. So let's show you what those look like, cor the correct way and the wrong way. So the correct way, again, that elbow is tucked in toward my hip. My right hand is turned a little bit more to the right on the golf club. I'm gonna feel like I'm more behind the golf ball like we talked about in the beginning of this video with the, the shoulder tilt or my body tilt. And now it's gonna be easier to get that club swinging to the right and going ahead and releasing that face. I may even do a little too much here. Now, so I exaggerated there and I got kind of a sweeping draw. Fine, still in the fairway and hit it pretty good, but you can always tone that down. Again, in the beginning, get the pathway to the right, get the face really turning over and do these drills every single day to get more and more comfortable with it. So that time, that ball started a little bit to the right center, almost landed dead straight. 8.8 .8 to the right with the path, 5.8 to the right with the face. That means my face was three degrees closed compared to the direction I was swinging the club. 
So do those drills, work on those consistently. If you just do them today, stand up out of your chair, get started right now. Don't wait until tomorrow, don't wait until this afternoon. If you're at your office, swing a, you know, a broom that you got sitting in the corner. Do whatever you have to do. Make a few swings and then continually do those every single day to build the muscle memory. This is one of the reasons in the Top Speed Golf system and our website, all of our programs are longer programs. We have a 90 day ball striking class where people pick up on average, I think it was 11 miles an hour of club head speed. They dropped two strokes off their handicap. They said 85% of them said that they're hitting the ball as good or better than they ever have in their life. But that's because we built that muscle memory over a 90 day period. Same thing with the Top Speed Golf system. It's a longer course, that way you ingrain this. It's great to go out and practice today and hit it a little bit better, but if I come back a week and I'm hitting it bad again, I'm not really getting anywhere. It's like I'm going up and down like a roller coaster. We want that steady climb up and up and up, and that only happens if we consistently go over these fundamentals. Now let's take it the other way. We got the draw going. Let's get the, the exact opposite if we want to get the fade going. Again, the most important thing that we can do is have that path or that club moving to the left. Same thing like, like we did last time. I'm going to line up a little left. I'm going to have my body, instead of being tilted this way, it's going to be a little bit more up and down if I want to hit that fade. And then now I'm going to swing to the left and see if I can get that ball to fade back. There we go. That ball started left, started to fade back a little bit. I exaggerated, but again, we don't have to have a $12,000 machine or a $20,000 machine to judge the face and the path. I know that path was left because that ball curved back to the right. So I know my path was to the left. If I look at my flight scope, 9.7 to the left. So I would have bet a million bucks that it was going to say something to the left because the ball doesn't lie. If you look at that ball flight, you learn how to read it, you can know the direction you're swinging and what the face angle is doing. All right, so just like we did on the draw, let's take it up to another notch. If we're still struggling getting that path to the left, now we're going to feel like maybe that right elbow is a little bit more on top, that right shoulder is more on top, and I'm going to exaggerate swinging even more that direction. Now here, most people don't struggle doing this. The reason that most people don't struggle with a fade is because if I simply just try to pull this club toward the target, look what happens to the club face. It opens up and I'm going to have that face open as I'm coming on through. So typically people don't have a, tr have a problem at all swinging to the left and leaving the face open. So I'm not going to get into a ton of detail with that. But again, the key here is we can't just do this one day and say, okay, I hit some fades, I have it down. It's about every single day for a short period of time. It doesn't have to be hours a day. It can be five or 10 minutes in your living room. Work on the path going to the right, work on the path going to the left, work on the fade, work on the draw. And then from there, now we're going to go ahead and straighten it out. So if I want to straighten it out and hit these great straight shots, all I'm going to do is something in the middle and I'm going to watch the ball to see what's going on. So I'm going to watch, because we talked about path so much here and how important that is, I'm going to watch the way the ball curves and adjust my path first. So I'm going to try to hit this absolutely dead straight and we'll see what happens. All right, hit that one good. A little tiny bit of a draw, maybe my path could have been just a fraction to the right, but that's going to be pretty daggone close to zero. If that ball would have curved left, I would have adjusted my path. If that ball would have curved right, I would have adjusted my path the other direction. So I have to always be adjusting that and playing with it when I'm playing. I'm gonna do that over a period of a month. Let's see what my flight scope said. Anything under three is a really good straight path. That was 2.7, so definitely a good shot. Barely any curvature at all in there. 2.7 to the right on that one. So again, I don't have to have this fancy flight scope. It's great to have one but I don't have to have one to be able to read the ball flight and know what's going on at contact. Really commit here. If you want to get really good this year, if you want this to be your year that you're going to solidify your game, you're going to have it stick to where six months from now, a year from now, two years from now, you have control of the face and the path. Commit to doing this for 30 days in a row. Work on it, even if it's for five or 10 minutes, adjusting the path, adjusting the face, feeling like the, close, the face is closing and opening, and you're going to be so much farther and so much better when you do so. 
Now here's what you do next. We talked about how to adjust the face and path, but we have to pair that up with a great straight line release. I have a preview of one of the best straight line release videos is about to play in a second. Get comfortable letting that ball get in the way and I'm just releasing the club out in front of the ball. Once I'm comfortable with that, I can simply just turn that to the right or turn that to the left and now I can hit my fades and draws on command. But we gotta learn that straight line release first. It's like a one-two punch. Those two things go together. So watch that preview. Go ahead and click your card on the screen. Click the link down below in the description. You'll get instant access to that video. Let's go ahead and get started. Well, a common misconception I see is that we want to create lag and we just want to hold that lag all the way on through contact and get as much lag as we can coming through contact. And that's simply not true. In the release section, we're going to talk about how to turn that lag into energy, how to turn that into speed so that you can hit it very far and do it, like we mentioned, without hardly any effort at all. And as we're coming through contact, we're going to fully release this angle as we're about 45 past contact. So if I draw you know, a 45 degree angle, I should be looking at both arms, nice and straight, the club splitting those arms, so that by releasing the club, by getting this angle to release as we're coming through contact, that's what's gonna create the speed. Our hands are moving a very short distance, our club is moving a very long distance through contact, and it creates that whip-like effect. Very different swings, hitting the exact same position. So first let's take a look at Dustin Johnson, releasing the club 45 past. And the reason we're gonna see such similar, or such different swings producing similar positions is that this is the real physics of how this has to happen. Here we're looking at Sergio Garcia. Again, we're gonna to see tons